What's up guys and welcome to the seventh video in the C Sharp tutorial series. So like I said in the previous video, we're gonna go over switch statements in C Sharp and just get a little more acquainted with them, okay? And switch, switch statements are usually used just to clean up your code and just make it a little cleaner than having a whole bunch of if and else if and else statements, of course. So, and of course you only have to evaluate a switch statement once, okay? And then you have different cases to handle each one. So it's just another way in C Sharp to to change the flow of your program based on different situations and cases, okay? Now, let's go ahead and start a console application and we will call it, you guessed it, switch statements. So we are left with our template inside of main and let's go ahead and start it with a uh, switch, okay? So what we can do is do int and it doesn't really have to be an int, it can be a string, it can be a, a, a character. So uh, anything that you can use in an if, of course, you can use in a case. But the subtle difference is that a switch statement cannot do like if you are if it's greater than or less than. It has to be equal to that value. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So what you do is switch, and then here you would do like your your value. All right. Now once you do that, you come into here, and then make your different cases. Okay. So what what we need to do now is have a value. Now we can implement something like a card value for like blackjack or something. So int and then card value. All right. And then what we can do here is just give it an initial value of like say zero for now. Now what we could do here is make different cases depending on what this card value is. Okay. So we can do case, you know, like one, and then we can do, case two, case three, case four. And then notice that there's a there's actually a control here and it says the control cannot fall through one through from one case label case four to another. So what it wants is a break, okay? So each one we'll just need to put a break into it. And that will break it from the the other. And what's what's that's doing is basically if you don't want it to execute another one, so if case one happens, then that's done. Kind of like the else if, right? And it'll break out of this switch statement entirely. Where if you don't have that, it'll just fall through to the next one, all right? So if we have break right here, it's gonna be okay. It, it, we have to have a break because there's nothing else after case four right here in our situation. And if we ha take out break here, we'll be okay because the program will be able to fall through to case four not necessarily execute it, but just check it, okay? So this is kind of like the if and the if, like we saw in the last video, where if this is true, it'll execute, and then if this is true, this will execute. Where this is like the else if right here, where if this is true, it'll execute, break, and then leave. And maybe this is true, maybe not, but it doesn't care at that point because you told it to break and leave the switch statement entirely, all right? But that's just really the difference between using break and not using it. Now let's go ahead and copy and paste a whole bunch of these to emulate some values. All right. Do something like five, six. These are just going to represent card numbers, right? So like, you know, in blackjack, we have card numbers from that you can have from two to 10. And then you can have the ace of course, which is in your favor of choosing one to 11, one or 11, sorry. And there we have it, okay? So we have different cases for each one, okay? So we have a card value and then it checks to see each one. And because we have a break statement in each one, it, one will execute and that'll be it, all right? Now, what we can do is we can do, we can inform the user what they drew and we can say, ace card all right and then of course the ace card is also for the 11 value as well and then what we can do here is we can do there's different cases for this of course too we can do 10 jack queen king right because each one of these has a value of 10 and then of course we can just carry on to nine, eight. 
So this might be a little, you know, trivial and self-explanatory, but hopefully this will get the point across of just getting a little comfortable with switch statements. That way, if you ever want to use them, you'll be more than able to. Four, and then this will be, of course, three, and then two. Okay, so now we have we have our cards, and then our card value, what we can do is just for now, until we until we progress and learn about arrays and loops and stuff, we're going to carry on with the blackjack and make it a little more sophisticated of a program, and make it, of course, with that make it a little funner. But for now, we'll just hard set it. Okay, so we'll actually do the we'll do string say card number read line like where we did it in the last video. And then what we can do actually is an if int try parse. All right, this will try to parse it. If it can't put it into a number, then it's gonna say, it's gonna not execute, okay? And then don't forget the out, of course. And then what, here we'll have an else, all right? So we're gonna have an else value. And then if this is true, this means that, you know, if it comes in the else, it's basically saying that you can't convert it. Can't convert input to integer value. Because this integer try parse will return false and say that I can't return this. So if you put in something like, you know, like a word, like hello, hello cannot be converted into an integer, obviously, and then this will happen, okay? That's a good way to, to let us know that something's up. And what we can do here is actually just, because we don't really need anything to happen, because the out value happens, we can just get rid of the else, and then we can do if not, okay? So if not try parse, so if this returns false, it can't parse it, this will be turned into true, and then this will execute, all right? So if it can't, if not try parse, then it can't convert input to integer value, all right? So that's just another thing that just uses notation inside of it, which is perfectly legal with C sharp. Now, our card value will get the, will get a value, of course, if it is something, and if not, it'll get the value of zero. Now, what we'll go ahead and do is first, let's go ahead and put a number in, like say three, and then it did input three card, but let's go ahead and of course, let's not forget our console read line so that we have some time to check out what's going on. Five, five card, and then it will execute, okay? So this is basically the, the very basics of a of a switch statement, just a whole bunch of cases that's checked on a an expression. Now, what if we, if we want multiple cases? Like, you know, like case one and case 11 are, are doing the same thing, right? They're both ace cards. So we can actually couple those together, all right? So what you could do is actually take this and bring it over here. And you can do case one, case 11, all right? So now this is perfectly legal because case one, if it's one or 11, then this will execute, okay? And this is really something that we could clean up some code because of the fact that we were doing exactly the same thing, okay? So whether we put one or 11, ace card will fire, all right? Now, we could have also, let's go ahead and undo this, come back over here to our case 11. We can, what we can also do, guys, is we can actually just do like a go-to or something. And we can do go-to case one. Get rid of that. And then this will never fire because of the fact that it's going to another case. So once it's case 11, it is actually gonna go into case one, okay? So let's set a breakpoint just to see what's going on. And we'll, we'll, we'll input 11. Notice that it comes into here, so we are now in our code. Step over it, and then we're gonna go to the next breakpoint. And it comes back to case one, okay? So that's another way to do it. It's not really used very often, but 
decided to show you guys since it's something that is uh, that can be done, of course, inside of inside of C sharp. However, the first way I showed you is usually the way that I would do it and just kind of get rid of this entirely and then just simply put that right here as well. All right, that way they both fire either way. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you is a default case, okay? So if you have a, like the else inside of it, like an if and then an else and an else if, you have an else, of course, to have it to where if none of these conditions meet, do this. And that's what a default is for, for a switch statement. So you can have default And then maybe you can have Joker because the value of Joker just doesn't make sense. All right. Our break point, our break, and then there you go. So now if it doesn't meet any of these cases, it's going to go into the, into the default case, all right? So say we don't put a number in. If we put in like we know, we put in a hello, the string, where that cannot be parsed obviously, this is going to not happen and then it's going to remain zero which none of these cases will suffice so then it'll come into our default case all right so let's go ahead and run this and make sure that that's what's happening and i'm not just lying to you guys <laughs> so i'll put blah. that way that cannot obviously can be converted into an integer and can't convert input to integer value and it assumes you have the joker card all right because of the fact that once again this never fired because it couldn't convert it. So this remained its default value, which right now is zero. And then it came into here and says, okay, none of these cases will suffice and, and meet. Then I'll come into here and write out Joker. All right. So those are just a few things that you can do with a switch statement. And uh, I hope now that you guys are a little more acquainted with using a switch statement instead of, inside of C sharp and just the little things that you can do with it and why you really would want to use it over a if statement because you know, explaining why is very important than just how, because if you, uh, you know, explain how, then that's one thing. But if you don't explain why, then you'll really never know why to use it, right? So um, I like to use it when the, when it just cleans up my code and I can use, instead of nesting a whole bunch of if and else, I can just ex check something one time and just have a cleaner code and really just for readability, you know, now when I come back here, I could really read and see what's going on with my code. All right. So the next video is going to deal with loops and learning how to use the while loops and, and do while and fours inside of C sharp and what we can do with that and, and how we can benefit from using loops in, in particular situations. All right, thanks for watching guys.